Triple A gaming is bad. You heard me, I said it, bad. But why is this? What's killing these games off? And why is this indie game made by one person 10 times better than a triple A game with a $1 billion budget? Well, let's find out. Essentially, as of recently, the gaming community has had an outcry, begging AAA companies to make good games or sequels to their favorite franchises. But most big budget games have been slop. But this doesn't mean that gaming as media has been failing. Not at all, actually. It's actually been thriving, thanks to indie games, such as Pal World, Helldivers 2, Lethal Company, Content Warning, and so many others. These games have been more successful than 90% of AAA games. But why is this? How could these games make so much more revenue? have a fanbase who actually likes them, and be more successful than some of the biggest companies in gaming? Well, it's just as simple as you may think. You see, what big budget games are doing, like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 2023, are optimizing to have more microtransactions. Now, I could sit here all day and say that AAA gaming is bad because bigger companies want more money, but then I'd be rehashing what every other article is saying. I want to get into the nitty gritty of it. And I don't believe Modern Warfare is bad because of microtransactions purely. Well, yes, the monetization practices are a bit atrocious. It's never the main cause for a bad game. No, no, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 2023 had a big figures and sales this year. But the game was considered a failure because of one main thing. It couldn't keep a player base. So, my first comparison of the video is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 2023 and Lethal Company. Now, these two are completely different games. But do you know what they have in common? A multiplayer experience. Now, you probably know what Call of Duty is. You have a team where you- wait, no. You capture a flag, right? Uh, no. Uh, you play a battle royale- uh, hang on, uh, you can become a duck? You see what I'm saying? Call of Duty has somewhat lost its own identity. And it sounds like any other basic shooter game. And it doesn't sound like anything new in the genre. By trying to appeal to everyone, they kinda unintentionally appeal to no one. Now, I'm not saying customization is bad in gaming. Not at all. What I am saying though is that for people who are trying out the game for the first time, it's very confusing, and this is somewhat unappealing to new players. And for old players in the genre of shooters, it just seems like a repackaged version of old Call of Duty games, except with slightly better graphics and a few new items and features, but too many options. Controls, an awful menu, it's a bit of a turnoff for newcomers, and even older players. However, this is Lethal Company's strength. If you don't know, Lethal Company is an indie horror survival team game made by a 21-year-old all by himself. He didn't have a $1 billion budget like Modern Warfare 3 2023 did, and he didn't have a corporation to help fund it, and yet has sold between 10.2 million and 12.5 million copies and still going upwards. This game has over 314,000 views on Steam, and they are all overwhelmingly positive. The game is rated a 10 out of 10 and has a 97% score. But what's so special about Lethal Company? It clearly doesn't have the best graphics. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 has way better graphics. Lethal Company doesn't have the best controls. Modern Warfare 3 has better. And Lethal Company doesn't have really new updates. Modern Warfare 3 updates the game about every week. So what's going on here? Well, Lethal Company is one of the first of its kind. If you think about it long and hard, what other games are there where your voice chat will change with the environment? And the further away you go from your other teammates, the harder it is to hear them while simultaneously having a strong horror factor where you have to reach a quota and where you travel to different planets gathering scraps and various objects for the company. And if you don't reach the quota, the company won't be pleased. And there's many more interesting gameplay mechanics, but Lethal Company doesn't reinvent the wheel either. They simply just make a product that is unique and enjoyable as a player rather than trying to appeal to everyone like Call of Duty does, with a $70 game that has a $10 battle pass, pay to win weapons that you can only get in bundles that are between the price of $20 to $30 each, while the other company on the other hand costs $10 alone and has no pay to win factor whatsoever, but is a purely fun game that doesn't need microtransactions to improve it. Moving on to our second comparison, we have the fabled Suicide Squad and Pal World. Another two completely different games, Pal World is an indie game developed by Pocket Pair. And this is another example of not having to reinvent the wheel, because Pal World draws multiple mechanics, designs, and aspects from other games, not stealing them, but using them as inspiration. Pal World draws comparisons to Zelda, Pokemon, you can maybe even say Fortnite or Minecraft, but you get it. Pal World is unique in its own right, and it is a refreshing feel to the gaming genre. Pal World is an open world survival game where you find creatures called pals. Now this may just sound like Pokemon, until you learn more about the game. 
in Pal World, you can catch the pals, you can use them to enhance your base, help you fight other pals, and survive. With guns! That's right. You can supply some of these little guys with guns. And there's also eating in Pal World. Weight capacity, riding other pals for traversal, fast travel, multiplayer, and a ton more. Pal World innovates in a special way. They come up with original ideas, while taking inspiration from other games to implement on their own, and while simultaneously being accessible and easy to understand for newcomers. Now, on the flip side, we have the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Now, what's wrong with this game, you may be asking? Well, this game has some of the worst monetization I've ever seen. Now, here's the thing. I'm fine, I guess, with microtransactions and video games, but if you are going to have them, and you're going to have a game that is live service, have the game be free while the cosmetics cost money, or have the game cost money while the cosmetics are free through challenges. But don't implement both. $10 for a t-shirt? That's almost as much as a real t-shirt costs on Amazon. And the game itself costs about $70. I could say that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is bad because of the story and gameplay, but I think I've already made my point. Power World costs only $30, and has no extra microtransactions, and delivers a fully-fledged game made by a small gaming company, while Rocksteady, on the other hand, delivered a $70 game that wasn't a full true game experience, that was littered with microtransactions and atrocious monetization practices. So now, with both comparison topics out of the way, Call of Duty and Lethal Company, with the actual game, and Suicide Squad, and Power World with monetization, we have one more comparison, and probably my favorite out of the three if I'm being honest. The Day Before, and Helldivers 2. Starting off with The Day Before. The Day Before is a zombie survival game that released on December 7th, 2023. There's not much else to say about it, while on the flip side, Helldivers 2 was a sequel to the not-so-popular Helldivers game from several years prior. But Helldivers 2 exploded with popularity. The game costs $40 and is a live-service game, where you fight automatons and terminates. FOR DEMOCRACY! But in all seriousness, this game is a blast. I could go way more into detail, but essentially you play as a Helldiver. You're dropped in drop pods with three other Helldivers to help destroy these factions, automatons and terminates, for Super Earth. And that's Helldivers 2 in an extremely small nutshell. There's so much more to go into this game that makes it so incredibly fun. And when the game fully released, some bugs were found in the game, so the developers of the game encouraged people to not buy it until it was fully done. Can you imagine a big game company saying to not buy their game? It seems like a fever dream to think that developers would care about their players. But on the flip side, we had the day before. Oh boy. When it released and people got the game, people were so upset because they got scammed. This game wasn't even half-baked, it was just microwave for 10 seconds. And they called it a day. They also bought literal props and sets from other games to save time and money but the developers claimed to have made everything from scratch. And because of all of this, no one bought the game. And as such, on December 11th, only four days after launch, mind you, they took the game out of all stores, saying it wasn't profitable enough. They only gave the game four days to be profitable. Of course it's doomed to fail. And even if they left it out for longer, they still scammed everyone. So of course it was going to fail anyways. That's why Helldivers 2 was successful though. They were honest with their players and the community, and they didn't try to cut any corners or take from your wallet like the day before did. Which is another reason why Helldivers 2 succeeded and the day before failed. So finally, what were the three reasons AAA games failed? Number one, a bad product. Number two, egregious monetization practices. And number three, they weren't being honest and upfront with their community. Any AAA game would fail for these reasons. Now, this doesn't mean these games can't come back from it. Look at Halo Infinite, one of the absolute worst launches ever, but after several years, it rebuilt itself to be a fully-fledged operating game. And Halo Infinite suffered from all three of these aspects, but it still picked itself up. And now appears to be a fully working game. But for those three reasons, that's why I've been playing indie games rather than AAA games, as of recently. And if you disagree with anything I said, that's completely fine. But I hope AAA recovers from this atrocity. And I also hope that indie games become more of a norm in the gaming community. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm implementing a new thing though at the end of each of my videos where I shout out three to five creators. And thanks to 100 Gold Games for the inspiration. Check them out if you like gameplay, sort of reviews, and whatnot. 
super fun and entertaining videos, and he also has a Minecraft SMP server that he's started, and he needs more players. So check out his channel and video on how to join it. Link in the description, and also check out his Discord, which will also be linked in the description. And while you're down there, you know, maybe check out mine, possibly if you want to. Um, and that is where all the creators' channels will be as well. Next is Mr. Green. He does a whole bunch of videos uh, revolving around gaming stuff, ranging from reactions to new seasons, gameplay openings, and more. Next, we have Jump Knight. He makes videos on the hit video game Terraria, involving various challenges and playthroughs, and more. Next, we have Trex. He makes Fortnite-related content involving ASMR and gameplay, if you're into that, as well as setup tours. And finally, we have Wolfinson? Wolfiesins, I think that's how you say it? Wolfiesins uploads both Roblox content and memes for your entertainment. So make sure to subscribe to all of these creators and check them all out. And as always, have a lovely night.